In War Thunder, the map players frequently come across is the Fields of Normandy map, or the Normandy map for Ground RB, the real life location being Viville sur Mer, France. While many of you have probably played this map at least a thousand times or more, I believe there is something to learn from these maps that Gaijin have implemented into the game over the years. That being said, the more recent map additions have been fictional and transitioned towards more modern settings to accommodate the addition of modern vehicles. The map we're looking at today, Normandy, is a historically accurate depiction of the town and surrounding area, excluding the scale. During the Second World War on the 6th of June 1944, the largest amphibious operation the world has ever seen took place. The name of the operation, referred to as Operation Overlord, or D-Day, was a part of the Allied plan to retake mainland Europe from German occupation. This was led by Supreme Allied Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower. The beach in the footage, and photo you can see on the screen, is Omaha Beach. This was one of five beaches, with the other being Sword, Juno, Gold, and Utah. At the time, the beach was heavily fortified in anticipation for an Allied invasion. The defences spanned across the coast of Europe, from France through to the Netherlands, and across Norway, which was known as the Atlantic War. Almost six million mines were placed in northern France, according to Peter Darman, with the addition of improved fortifications such as pillboxes, machine guns, anti-tank guns, and light artillery. Field Marshal Erwin Rommel was placed in charge of the newly formed Army Group B, and was responsible for a lot of the decision making when it came to establishing these defences. On the beachhead, large-scale slanted poles with sharpened tops were designed to prevent Allied gliders deploying troops in this area. During the invasion, Allies deployed more than 150,000 men including massive amounts of equipment to the continent alongside 800 vessels, 1,662 aircraft, and 512 gliders, according to the Supreme Commander's report. While War Thunder does not include the same amount of vessels, it still encapsulates the feel and sets the tone of the battle when you look upon the ocean to see the overwhelming presence of the Allied forces. When looking at the armoured vehicles involved, according to President Eisenhower, they plan to use 1,500 tanks, 5,000 other tracked fighting vehicles, 3,000 guns, and 10,500 other vehicles ranging from jeeps to bulldozers. On D-Day, only three amphibious tanks out of the 32 made it onto shore with the other 29 sinking because of the Navy's decision to launch them 6,000 yards from the shore. Most tanks that did make it ashore following the capture of the beachhead were American M4 Shermans and British Churchill tanks, with a variant of the Churchill recently added to War Thunder known as the Churchill AVRE. Depictions of an assault on the village had been reported by 2nd Ranger Battalion Force C, led by Lieutenant Colonel Schneider and his troops, who landed at Viville Samur, but the first two waves took heavy fire upon their approach to the beach. Omaha Beach has been infamous in media depictions, including Saving Private Ryan, directed by Steven Spielberg, with the opening scene of the film highlighting the grotesque nature of war, with German MG42 machine guns cutting down hundreds of Allied soldiers effortlessly. Another notable landmark players will be familiar with, not too far from the village, is on the fields of Normandy map. The giant hangar located in the centre of the map is where competing teams fight over the B point. This hangar is called the Esqueville Airship Shed. It's first historical significance was during the First World War, as it served as a storage unit for airships known as Zeppelins, which patrolled the Channel Coast by the French Navy. In the early 20th century, air power was a relatively new concept, with airships being one of these creations. Germany saw frequent use of airships bombing coastal towns in England, damaging or destroying property. Towards the mid-1920s and early 1930s, Airships were gradually phased out in favour of piston-powered reconnaissance aircraft, making the hangar obsolete for that purpose. Following the occupation of France in 1940, the German military used the hangar as storage for its equipment, housing 155mm guns. During D-Day, the US 8th Infantry and supported tanks from C-Squadron attempted to take the air hangar and repel German defenders of the 243rd Infantry Division, in which they were successful. This was then repurposed into a prison camp. Following that, it was turned into a logistics centre for the Allies. The long history of this building is certainly an interesting one, as following the war, French Atomic Energy Commission used the building between 1967 to 1969 to test balloons aimed at validating the maintenance, communication and power supply system used during the test of the first French hydrogen bombs. It is pretty unexpected that this old hangar would have little, if any, use following the two world wars. The Esqueville airship shed reveals a unique history which not many people would have thought about when simply looking at a big hangar in the middle of the map with their tanks casually strolling by it. The different role and purpose it served over the course of the 20th century shows no matter who its occupiers were, it was a crucial location to hold in times of peace and war. 
I think it is interesting that Gaijin kept this historically significant event alive through the creation of this map 4D Day. While the game was originally centered around World War II setting, it's sad to see that newer iterations of maps don't resemble them any longer. Not only do these type of maps serve to represent the memory of those who fought there, but also inspire players to learn more about the map's history, including myself. I think it would be nice to see newer World War II locations as maps in War Thunder once again, instead of a copy and paste city map, which in my opinion is either poorly designed or not thought through properly. Anyways, I hope you learned something new and would consider giving the video a thumbs up. See you in the next one.